Hello everyone. I am Professor Anish Vora and I welcome you all in our new series of video lecture. In today's video lecture, we will study about uh, computer edit design. We will see one flowchart for entire design of three phase induction motor. In previous lectures, we have studied about uh, the whole design, stator design, rotor design and main dimension of three phase induction motor. But uh, how we can uh, use computer edit design to prepare our entire three phase induction motor. We will see some of the steps one by one and then we can see how the flowchart for the computer edit design can be prepared. We start our design with a flow chart. So we start then at the first state we have specifications available. We need to design an induction motor and specifications are available. The available specification like a rated output either in kilowatt or in horsepower, then number of phases, frequency, mostly we use 50 hertz frequency, then stator voltage, whether it should be connected either in star or delta, maximum speed, then type, whether it is a square cage type or a it is a wound rotor type that depends on application. So the torque requirement, then duty cycle, power factor, efficiency, class of insulation we normally use, then permissible temperature rise. This type of specification must be available before we start uh, our designing. Specification mostly provided by the user based on the application. After specification, we have certain design parameters like our uh, specific loadings, specific magnetic as well as specific electric loadings. Then we have certain constraint that we have to establish at the first stage. We have constraint, for example, a peripheral speed. So, normal construction of the rotor, we have peripheral speed that is 30 meters per second, that is maximum. So, this type of constraint we have to fix at the initial stage. So, after a specification and constraints in the next step, will see how our design parameter can be chosen. So our uh, next stage that is choice of design parameters. Specially specific uh, magnetic as well as specific, uh, specific electric loading can be chosen at uh, this stage. Initially we choose then we go on designing then if certain parameters are not within a permissible limit then we have to change our sum of the design parameters and then we have to modify and we have to redesign our uh, uh, this whole design of the induction motor. We will see uh, after one by one. So once we choose our design parameters in the next stage or uh, when we start our designing work, we have to first estimate our main dimension. So main dimensions are stator bore diameter and stator core length that is capital D and capital L. So based on the choice of uh, our design parameters and based on constraint at the first stage, we decide or rather we estimate our main dimension 
that is uh, stator bore diameter and stator core length. So after uh, estimating our mean dimension in the next step we will estimate our air gap length. Air gap length is very important. We have certain factors which indicate that uh, more air gap length is uh, recommended in some of the parameters like power factor and magnetizing current say that uh, smaller air gap length is uh, recommended. So based on this designer have to design or estimate air gap length. So after air gap length our next stage that is a stator design. In case of stator we have to design stator winding as well as stator core and stator slot design. So one by one if we complete the full stator design based on the estimated mean dimension and the constraints like slot loading we have to finalize uh, our stator design. After stator design in the next stage we start our rotor designing. In rotor we have rotor winding whether it is a squirrel cage type or wound rotor type and we have a rotor core design. In rotor core design to decide the rotor slots we have to take a base of uh, stator slots. To avoid the certain harmonics we have certain set of rules to decide the rotor slots. Then a rotor resistance is very important for starting torque. So in case of a squirrel cage induction motor we have short circuited rotor design. We have end ring and rotor bars while in case of a wound rotor type we have slip rings and external resistance can be connected. So this way we have designed our rotor. After completing stator design, after completing air gap rent, then a rotor winding, rotor core design. In the next stage we calculate losses and efficiency. Now the full all parameters we have. So based on all parameters we can easily able to calculate losses and based on the losses we can easily able to calculate efficiency. After calculating losses and efficiency we calculate slip. After calculating slip now we have to redesign if slip is not ok. So here we have a decision that uh, if slip is ok. Suppose if slip is not ok then we have to modify certain parameters. We modify resistance and specific magnetic loading. Flux density we have to change. So again we go at this while we selected our design parameters. So we modify and then redesign and we follow the entire steps and ultimately when slip is ok, if we get a yes, if slip is ok, then we proceed further for the next design. So after slip we have to calculate temperature rise. In case of induction motor or in case of any uh, rotating machine temperature rise is very important. So we need to calculate temperature rise. So calculation of temperature rise as we know it purely depends on total losses. Then surface area provided for heat dissipation and the cooling condition we have applied while designing 
this particular three phase induction motor. So based on this all parameters we have to calculate temperature rise. The class of insulation we have already used and uh, the temperature rise which is uh, based on the losses the temperature rise now so condition must be match our temperature rise must be within a permissible limit and the permissible limit is decided by the class of insulation we have used so if we calculate our temperature rise and then again we have to decide that whether temperature rise is a within a limit if yes then we can proceed for further uh, completion towards the design but if temperature rise by chance is not within a permissible limit then we have to again modify our certain parameters we have to modify conductor size slot size and again we go to the choice of design parameters we have specific electric loading we might have to change or might have to modify some of our design parameters and after completion we have to redesign or we have to follow the whole process once we modify any of the design parameters so if temperature rise is uh, not within a limit we go for modification in design if temperature rise is uh, within a permissible limit then we proceed for further designing so in further designing once temperature rise is uh, within a permissible limit then we complete uh, our design at this point then we finally print design data this is the our final designing and then our flow chart is stopped at this point so this way we have one very simple flow chart and we can able to design our three phase induction motor in a very simple steps first we have to make a algorithm based on the algorithm we have to prepare our flow chart and based on the flow chart we can actually start our designing on computer aided design we call it computer aided design and based on the specification we can start our designing work so i hope we understand the importance of computer aided design we have seen in this video lecture a very simple flow chart so i must stop here thank you very much thank you for watching my video keep watching my video thank you thank you very much